Cursor just released version 2.0 and it is a huge update and it's important even if you're a non-technical person building apps with AI and I want to break it down for you in 15 minutes and I've been using Cursor over the last few days since it launched and is it a vibe coding tool now? In this video I'm going to break down all the key features of Cursor 2.0 and why you should try using it even if you're a non-technical founder and also give you my thoughts on how vibe coding tools and developer tools are getting slowly closer and closer together and by the end of this video you'll know exactly how to get started with Cursor 2.0. If you don't know me my name is Chris and for the last 15 years I've been designing apps and advising startups on product and design and with that said let's jump straight into Cursor 2.0 and see exactly what it can do. Build great products. Build great products. So this is Cursor 2.0, and if you're familiar with Cursor, you'll notice that this looks a little bit different. If you haven't used Cursor before, you might just think, well, this looks like any other vibe coding tool with a text box in the middle and a real focus on the chat. If you're familiar with Cursor, you're probably used to this editor view where you have your list of code uh, files on the left, your chat on the right-hand side, and then this area in the middle to kind of view the files, edit the code, all of that sort of stuff. And if you select this option here, which is connect to browser in the chat and turn the browser tab on, then this starts to look even more like a vibe coding tool because now I can access a browser inside cursor which can load my local development environment for the app that I'm building, which essentially is very similar to the preview window if you've used tools like Lovable or Bolt or Replit where you have the preview of your app on the right hand side and the chat on the left. There are a few differences to bear in mind with Cursor version two and this agent view here in the editor is that you can create as many agents running on your code base on your app as you want in the left hand panel here and there's also a few more interesting features to talk about once we get into actually building something here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start building and i'm going to start building an app using this new large language model from cursor which has been built from the ground up by the cursor team to be one of the fastest coding models out there and it's going to be significantly faster than Claude Code, than Codex, than Sonnet 4.5, than GPT-5. But it's, a it's not quite as good, but it is a lot faster. So I'm going to set it to Composer 1, which is the name of this model that Cursor have developed. And then we're going to start building our app. So let's just say build a simple React app, a big button that launches confetti. And we're going to send this to Cursor. And you can see here in the left hand bar, we've now got this agent up and running and it's loading and it's in this in progress category. But we can also click whilst this is working away crazy fast here um, in this view. And you can see all of the code that Cursor is editing here and adding is we can click new agent and we can just start a new agent to build something else here. This is actually now finished and awaiting review. That was super, super quick. Um, but I can get something else up and running, another agent if I want to, um, in a separate agent window. I'm going to go to this um, chat here with this agent, and we can open the browser again if we want. So let's get the browser tab open. It said uh, this app uses canvas confetti for the confetti effect. It's built the React app structure. If I jump back over to the editor, we can see here we've got our files for this app on the left, the same as you would have in a traditional cursor view, and you have your chat on the right hand side. But I want to really focus on this uh, on this agent uh, tab in cursor because that is the main thing that's changed here. Now that we've got all this, if we want to keep these changes, we can click keep all here. And then what we can do is just say run this app in the chat. And then cursor is going to basically run this app for us. Um, we're going to click run. So it's going to install all the dependencies for this app and it's going to start a local development server. Now, if you don't know what a local development server is, basically a local development server is just a server that runs your application on your local machine and you can access that by going to a local host URL to view that web app in a browser. And that is how developers work to build applications and build software. So if you're non-technical, if you don't know about this stuff, that's how it works. For anyone who does know about this stuff, just know that you can run your app and you can view it in a browser here in Cursor. And there's a really important reason that I wanna show you why this is 
this works so well rather than just opening it in a separate web browser. And so this is now running. We've got it here. It's on localhost 5173. We can either copy that and just paste that into the browser here. And that will be able to that will be able to run our app, or we can just tell Cursor to open this app in a browser window and it'll be able to do that. The reason why this is so important, um, instead of use, instead of just going to this local host URL in a browser, is because there's a few controls over here in the Cursor version of the browser. One is the console logs, which is not super interesting, but this is basically developer tools where I can access the console logs here. And one of the ways that I would help basically tell people to fix their bugs that they, if they have any in their app for non-technical people who don't really know what's going on one of the ways to find out what's going on is to look in the console logs for your application and that will give you a lot of the errors a lot of the error messages anything that's not working in the console so you can take that and put it back into the ai chat with a few other things because i have a couple of prompt frameworks that i use for debugging and fixing bugs but it's really great to just have the access to that right inside cursor. If I close that, I want to show you the other thing which is really, really important here, which is I can select element. So if I want to select any element in the browser, I can now just click select element up here. I can click on this button and it will add that button to the chat context. And I can just say, make this button yellow instead. And then cursor is going to go away. This is all in the same agent chat that we've got here. And we can scroll back up to view the chat history. Um, now, one of the ways that I recommend working with AI coding tools, whether that's Lovable or Cursor or Claude Code or whatever it is, is to clear your chat context, clear the context whenever you want to do a new feature or a new change or something that's in a different context, basically. And you can do that just by clicking new agent and you can archive these agents if you don't want them clogging up your view on the left hand side here. We can see that Cursor Composer has edited that super quickly and now it is a yellow button. I targeted that specifically to make that change. If I click that, that's going to launch confetti. Amazing. We can just keep launching confetti there. And then we just click keep all if we want to keep that. That closes that. You can just open up the browser tab again just by clicking that browser tab button in the chat window here. Now oh, this is super, super useful. Let's say we want to add a new feature here. I'm going to show you some other things that are really, really important to know about in Cursor 2.0. So let's start a new chat here. One of the things that is super useful, and I think also one of the ways that I would suggest people to fix bugs or build features is to try using different AI models for different types of tasks because some of them are better at different tasks and also sometimes it can just work to use a different AI model to try and fix something if one AI model isn't working. And so what we can do here is we can click this use multiple models. Now I need to start a Git repository for this project. So let's just start a Git repository here. Let me just say create git repository for this project and that is going to create a git repository for our project let's run these so that's now initialized so we're going to do a new agent here and we're going to go to this drop down we're going to click use multiple models so let's say i want to i'm struggling to fix a bug and i've been trying to use composer but composer isn't giving me any good results so what i can do is i can also select this multiple models and i can compare the outputs of three different models so let's say make the or maybe like this also might be good for something a little bit more subjective so let's say make the design insanely good that is a bad prompt by the way just if you're wondering um, and this is now going to show us the outputs between these three different coding ai models so we're going to be able to see what does composer look like what does gpt5 look like and what does sonnet 4.5 look like and we're also going to be able to see how many lines of code it's written and how many kinds of lines of code it's deleted. So we can also make this super efficient as well by some, sometimes you might want to go with the option that has the less number of lines of code written. This gives us a really good way of comparing the outputs of different AI models. You can see Composer is like basically finished. That's how fast it is. Uh, Sonic 4.5 looks like it's nearly finished as well. GPT-5 codex is still thinking it says it needs a bit more direction which part of the project are you looking to redesign what does insanely good mean for you that's actually pretty good because this is just a bad prompt so specific inspirations features or problems you want to solve thanks gpt codex you're actually asking me good questions here that is really good um <laughs> if we like these we can click apply all let's click apply all 
and see what this this is composer one's confetti um and it's added like a gradient and like there's some crazy animation going on here i don't know even it's not even working properly um <laughs> but you can see the different outputs of different ai models by doing it this way one other way that you can work with this is also to do it's called cycle agent count this means that i can run the same prompt with the same agent multiple times and i can compare between basically two three or four different outputs of the same coding model here so we can run a prompt we can see what it does like two three or four times and then choose the one that we like the best and then the last thing that I want to share here, which is a little bit more on the technical side for you non-technical people who are watching this, but if you understand, you know, Git and work trees and all that stuff, you're going you're gonna to understand how this works. If you're non-technical, basically what you can do here is now that we've created a project, we've created a Git repository, which means there's a single source of truth for the, all the code in this project, and it's stored in a Git repository. Because it's in a Git repository, what we can do is we can work on different branches basically a work tree within our project so if we want to we can create a new branch in our repository and we can just work on that branch and then if we're happy with the results we can merge that back into our main branch for our project and this gives us the flexibility to be able to work on basically multiple different things without affecting the core the main branch of our code base and this is how developers generally work with code bases work when they're coding and now you've got this built straight into the agent view in cursor 2.0 so that is all the key features that you need to know about in cursor 2.0 and i think what's really interesting with these tools is that even cursor is moving slightly more towards this kind of vibe coding style workflow where we have the preview available we have our agent chat we can create multiple agents we can choose all the different ai models here we can run them multiple times we still have access to all the code if we want to we are running the local version of a development server and seeing the preview in that we can do visual edits in here using this visual editor you can see the console log directly in cursor as well i really think this is a huge update from cursor 2.0 if you're a more technically minded non-technical person that seems stupid but um maybe you are um i think i'm definitely that way i like to get stuck into the details even though i don't understand fully what's going on in the code then cursor 2.0 is a great tool to start using and to try out i'd highly recommend just giving it a go and seeing how it works for you so you can see all of the features in Cursor 2.0 and why I think it's so powerful, even for non-technical people building apps. And with this change, you can kind of see the slow merging of these different kind of tools from AI coding tools to vibe coding tools. They're all kind of moving in this similar sort of direction, multiple AI agents working on your app, being able to see the preview of your app in the workspace that you're working in, being able to easily switch between these different AI models and and also the move to faster AI coding agents to make working on your app and building much, much faster. If you're just getting started with building apps using AI and you're a little bit more technically minded, I think Cursor is a great jumping in point. But as with all of these tools, there is no one right tool. So really just try using the new version of Cursor, see what you think, see how you get on with it, and it might be the right tool for you. Ultimately now you can build real apps using pretty much all of these AI coding tools. It's just about building in the right prompt framework, the right process, and the right approach to actually building your app. And if you wanna learn more about that and how to actually do that properly, you can find out more over in my community at school.com forward slash AI apps. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Build great product. Build great product.